So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 57. And today is um, August already, August the 3rd, 2023. And the topic this evening is um, the Kundalini again. However, it is really talking about um, the whole Kundalini because I've kind of mentioned in previous episodes that the kundalini um, used to be in the center used to be in the center of our body and there are two um, major energy currents that run that runs within us one is a central meridian which takes the energy from the universe into us and then the kundalini is the energy that takes energy from earth and um, runs it through our body back to the universe. So these two major um, currents within our body used to be in one place in the central of our body. However, as the axis of earth kind of tilted, the Kundalini um, becomes more closer to where our spine is. So it kind of runs parallel with our spine. And so the central meridian and the kundalini are not in the same spot anymore. And so tonight I want to talk more about the central meridian. And also the our aim is actually to bring those two back together again. So that the kundalini and the central meridian would be running in the middle. Because um, there are consequences when they are not in the same place which I will expand more on later in this episode. But for now, I just want to give the introduction and also um, let's do a presence meditation together so we can get present. So take a deep breath in, just breathe in, just uh, sit comfortably and just take a deep breath in through your nose. Breathe in. And breathe out slowly and thoroughly. Breathe out. And then breathe in again. Breathe in through your nose slowly, but the, uh, very deeply. And when you cannot breathe in anymore, then you can start to breathe out slowly through your nose. And then one more time, breathe in. And breathe out. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And just breathe in and out comfortably for a few more breaths. Each time you breathe in, make sure you are breathing in deeply, expanding your lungs to the fullest. And as you breathe out, make sure you are actually relaxing your body as you breathe out. Just allow your body to let go and be more relaxed. And when you feel your body is starting to be more relaxed, then you can start to shift your focus into your heart. And when you, when your focus is on your heart, also intentionally bring back all of your energies to yourself. And let go of all the thoughts all the activities of today, 
in this moment, focus on yourself. Don't think of anything or anyone else besides yourself in this moment. Just be with your body 100% in this moment. And allow yourself to relax. Bring back all of your attention. We do a lot of things during the day. In this moment, though, bring back all of your attention on yourself in this moment. Just be in this moment. Bring back all of yourself so that you are fully and completely with yourself. Also bring back all the parts of your soul. No matter where your soul has been to, just set the intention you want to call back all parts of yourself to you in this moment. Set that intention to call back all parts of your soul to yourself and just give yourself a few more moments to come all the way back to you no matter where so I've been and really feel what it feels like to have all of your soul parts back together again And then take a deep breath in and let all go and come all the way back into the room. Open your eyes if you haven't already and welcome back everybody. <clears throat> welcome back. So we are going to talk about the um, central meridian this evening and I just want to get my notes first and just to um, make sure I don't miss anything okay great so welcome those of you who joined a little late Welcome, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry <clears throat> to be late. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so we're going to talk more about Kundalini. And um, so Kundalini, we... Um, As I've mentioned, Kundalini is really energy from mostly from Earth, but it's also from our body too. Our, our body parts, our emotions, they affect how our each of the, the chakras within our Kundalini, how they behave. And um, as a whole, the Kundalini spins clockwise. And it is the state of our Kundalini is really reflects our experience on Earth, how we experience Earth itself. However, 
when we switch over to start talking about the central meridian. Just want to mention that the central meridian, um, well, the Kundalini brings energy from the earth into the body and then all the way up to the top of the head. And the central meridian does the opposite direction. It takes energy from the universe. Um, also some energy from earth as well. It takes the energy from the universe and bring it through the top of our head all the way down to our body and actually four inches below our body. So that is how the, the energy works. So central meridian brings in energy from mostly from the universe, from the um, Milky Way, from and partly from Earth. And it while the Kundalini spins clockwise, the central meridian spins anti-clockwise. So it spins differently. And the um, central meridian really controls our consciousness. It is really about how much we are aware of um, at a soul level. And um, so let's talk a little bit about the position of our uh, central meridian. This is something that I've gone through before. So, so that's why I'm not going to go into too much um, detail about them, but I am going to just have a very brief um, kind of refresh refresher. So I'm going to share screen with you all so you would be able to actually um, see the slides. So as I mentioned, it the central meridian, um, each of the energy centers of the central meridian, the first one that brings energy from the, the universe to us is eight inches above the top of our head. And then the second one, which is energy center seven, is four inches on top of our head. And then um, sixth one is between our eyebrows. And then the fifth one is um, governing um, um, meridian like GV14. So where is GV14? I just want to um, kind of show a picture of GV14. Oh no, this is not GV14. Um, this is the picture of GV14. So let me blow it up. So GV14 is right this one. So it's kind of um, just above our collarbone. That's GV14, also called cervical number seven. Um, that, that's the bone, the cervical number seven bone, which is right above our collarbone. And then the, um, if we switch back to this one here, so that's GV14 and then um, energy center number four is GV10. Now GV10 is right here, this one. So it's, it's the, um, is T6, thoracic six. So it's just a little bit, above the um, shoulder blade at the in our body, in, in terms of our body. Now, um, even though I'm showing this on the spine, however, that center, the energy center is actually in the middle of our body. It's not, it's not like the um, chakras where they are closer to the bone. I'm just giving you just about the, where it is at. However, it is really around thoracic six and it is in the middle of your body. Okay. And then that's the, so EC4 is really where our heart is. 
it's around there. Um, it's at the level of our heart, but it is um, in the middle of our body, where our, whereas our heart is a little bit to the left. So energy center number three is two inches above the navel in the middle of our body. And then EC2, energy center number two, is um, governing this GV1, which is um, between the cossex and our anus. So that's where the energy center two is. But it is like at that level, only within the middle of the body. And then energy center number one is four inches below, and it is right around, um, so four inches below the um, perineum and in the middle of the body. So that's kind of all where the energy centers are in terms of the central meridian. And then the function, I'm just going to go through them very quickly because I, I've been through this, um, well, it's a while, it's been a while, maybe a couple of months, meaning maybe earlier this year, I actually have, uh, or late last year, I've actually gone through these with you. So I, it seems like I'm rushing it, but it's because um, these are things that I have went through with you. So what is the main function of energy center number eight? It's really to filter energies from source, from the Milky Way, and also it's our gateway to the universe. Universe that is that the creator source has um, given us to play in. So, and so energy center number seven is four inches above our head, and that is really the controller of all the energy centers because it is. It's kind of, um, it pulls in whatever energy is needed for us. And it's also where we are connected with our guardians as well. If you um, remember that we each have a guardian, depending on what our um, birth dates are, we are connected to different guardians. Guardians simply means an energy source that is um, kind of like our. We, we actually, our, each of our soul is a part of a bigger energy group. So these bigger energy groups are really the, the guardians. So each of the guardians has a sphere of um, influence. And that's what, and the, the guardian that we belong to is really, we are exploring. We are simply kind of like the, um, the, the tentacles or the um, soldiers that this big guardians send out to gather more information, to gather more um, expertise on all of these, these different areas from the guardians. So, that's the energy center number seven is where we connect with our, um, kind of connect with our group leader energetically. So energy center number six is where our third eye is. It is um, it's in the middle of our head. And it is really about our consciousness, meaning what we are aware of while we are here. So it is about our imagination, intuition, our, um, it's about assisting us to become more um, conscious, meaning enlightenment, and also psychic senses, because part of the the things that we um, it's called city, meaning that when we are more conscious, we actually become more um, connected psychically because we it opens up our ability to be able to 
decipher energy, um, to get more information out of the energy. And energy center number five is where we speak our truth to the universe and also to communicate with the universe as well. So that is energy center number five. And energy center four is heart space. It is the core of our self as a soul, um, as a core of the self, as a sovereign soul. Well, that's the word that I'm, I'm looking for. The core of our sovereign soul um, beyond time and space. And then energy center number three is our willpower. It's, uh, it's to do with emotions as well. And also will meaning how focused we are and how determined, how passionate we are about pursuing something. And then energy center number two is about self-love, respect. It's really about um, masculine and feminine energies integrating those two because we are not just we have a gender we have, meaning that we are our body is either a um, either born as a male or a female however no matter what gender we are born with our body is, is um, created to be we actually have both masculine and feminine energies with us. And the more we can integrate the two and be able to draw strength from both, more we would be able to actually become a our true self. And then energy center number one, and remember that's four inches below our perineum, meaning it is outside our body. This is the gateway to earth energy and it filters energies from the environment and it actually um, it's about supporting our sense of safety and confidence as well so these are all the the, the location and the function of the central meridian and um, any questions so far or are we all clear Okay, I guess everything is clear. Wonderful. Clear as mud. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean clear as mud? You um I have to remember like all these like EC1, EC2, where it is, but other than that, like when I'm looking at the uh, listening and looking at the diagraph is is fine. But when I want to apply on myself, I have to really think where the EC6 is, where EC5 is. So that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yes. Um, you also have to, to know that whether you know where they are or not, it doesn't matter. They are there. <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> okay. know them. You don't okay. have to know where they are for them to be there. What you have to do is, let's say, um, energy center number eight. So the way is is to really, because um, you know, unconsciously, you know where it is. You don't have to consciously know it. Unconsciously, okay. you already know it. So what you have to do is just call. So just just uh, do this, everybody now. Just let's let's just call on energy center number eight. And you you breathe in and you with the intention that you want to send more energy to energy center number eight. And you do this a few times, you just breathe into energy center number eight.
there do you feel where it is now? Okay, I when I do that, I feel the movement at the back up to my shoulder. After that, I can't detect where it is. Okay, <clears throat> just relax your body. Okay, relax your body. Mm -hmm. Relax your body and kind of sit sit with your spine as uh, straight as you can possibly. Be uh, without stressing your spine. So just make sure your spine is relaxed as well as trying to keep it um, straight. And kind of just um, imagine that it's like you are, your spine is being stretched out. Just imagine your spine is being stretched out. And you just breathe into energy center number eight, eight inches above your head. And just breathe into it. Feeling better? I do feel like from here, like stretched. When you say stretch, I imagine stretching. Then, then my my I find that my body is kind of balanced, so I could feel a little more. Uh, or it's my imagination, but uh, I'm sitting on that cushion, so it's it's nice and like straight. So. Yeah, uh, it is a difference. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now let's let's do another place. So let's say energy center number five. So just breathe and just number five. So what do you feel? Okay, I felt now this time the energy is like, you know how the mountains are, like going like like mountains kind of things. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but I felt like it's like going like this. It's up to my shoulders. That's how I felt it more. Okay. Like I, I can imagine like it's going step by step, but it's in like triangle. It's going like this. That's why I call it like a mountain. So okay, it, cool. the, the eight inch one was like softer, but mm -hmm. it was a stretched. This one has a little different feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone feels it differently. So when I uh, focus on my energy center five, I mm -hmm. actually feel my throat uh, starting to, like I can feel that there's a pulse there. So that is the uh, my energy center number five, um, like becoming more activated or more active, I should say. Mm -hmm. So so for you, it's a different. So you have to, yeah, you, you just have to um, be aware of, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Great. you. Okay, you are welcome. Thank you for your question. It really uh, helps me to to help you. Thank you. I still feel like it's better if I know where it is. I just guessed that it was around the throat. 
this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> learn to trust your body. Okay. And even if your body is wrong, that's okay because it is a training process. So um, I totally understand why you, you would say that. Yes, because we, most of the time, we rely on our mind so much. Um, yeah. It is our ego wants to think, think, think. We want to know, no, no. And now we are actually tr starting to train, not to not that we are putting the ego down, but we want to train the body to um, to have faith, to trust. So that is something that is more of um, <clears throat> really tapping into energies that we um, we um, we can't see. So it is so that's that's part of that process is to trust. Right now. Yes, it may it may help if you know. However, get to the point where you even if you don't know, you trust your body because um, that's what we're here to do. We uh, we're here to assist the body to become stronger and more um, knowing, because our cosmic soul is actually a, um, higher energy than our body. It is just that our body is, we have so many programs in our body. So it's actually harder for our, our body to um, become, to, to kind of know these things. So yes, initially, you, I know I, I have that too is, yeah, if I know where it is, it, it, I kind of can feel it more, but um, also know that our job here is really to um, trust our body and also to train our body to decipher these things, to know because um, when the body knows, then um, it actually strengthens the body and, and we actually become more powerful. then that's actually, that's how we get to the point where we can download information because we, we want so much to know things. We want so much to know things, but we want to know it consciously. And, um, and also now the energy is actually so much more powerful that we can start to download information that we don't know through a book or through talking to other people. We can actually download information from the universe so that we um, get to learn from a different perspective. So this is, I'm not saying that all you guys need to do this. I'm just saying that um, this is where we are going. And if you want to kind of get ahead, then yeah, be comfortable not knowing and be comfortable trusting your body. Trust your body, yes. Um, initially though, check. So when your body gets something, then you verify it. The more you um, kind of trust your body and you do more verifying and you find out, you know, then you start to fine tune the body so that your body can um, become more and more powerful. Sorry, I I went off on a tangent. Yes. No, it's good. It's good. It's, it's, yeah, it takes practice. That's all. Interesting. Yeah. It. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, trust. Trust your body. Um. Even if you don't know which where the, the energy center is, you just breathe into it and yes. uh, feel from your body where it is. And then afterwards, you like you feel where it is. Then afterwards, you check, you check to to see. Oh, is it? Did I get the get? A, did I get it right or not? So, yeah. That. Okay. Thank you yeah. for your question. You. That's good answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
any other comments or questions before I keep go on going on? Okay, so so why do we need to do the bring in the central meridian now? It's because um, the central meridian is where we actually get to bring in so much more energy than what is uh, um, available from Earth. Um, energy, not just as in terms of energy, but knowledge, all of that as well. And so, and also um, because the central meridian and the Kundalini is supposed to work together. They, they are both, one is to bring energy in and the other is to bring energy up. So these two is, forms a circle that is really about why we are here on earth. It's not just to, um, it's also to allow the perspective of earth to be transmitted out to the universe as well, because earth is a very unique place. It's a unique earn, um, learning experience. And all of the planets, all, all of the planets, it's all, of course, all connected. And they all learn from each other. Each, each planet sets a very different um, playground for us, for, um, for our consciousness to learn things and to create unique experiences for ourselves. And so instead of just thinking that, oh, the universe is the, is, is the best, it's pretty awesome. However, Earth is very awesome as well. So we actually need this exchange. And for and because of the, the, the tilting of the Earth's axis, it axis hasn't been the, the, the energy, those two energy, the central meridian and Kundalini has been out of whack with each other. So that's why it affected our consciousness and now we are getting to the point where we are um, aligning ourselves with the, the, the universe again. So it's time to bring these two, uh, central meridian and the chakra together again so that we can work as one unit, not just being separated, uh, Earth being separated from the rest of the, the, the universe, because we have been. We are, because of the um, the, ref the um, artificial matrix that's been put around Earth, so that's why part of um, our the work now is to realign the, the energy centers in the central meridian and the chakras from the Kundalini. So that's why um, the central meridian is. I'm gonna. I want to talk more about the central meridian. So, how do we get those two to come back together again? So, first thing is really to um, feel the central meridian. So, for the past um, two months now, we've been working on clearing each of our kundalini center chakras. And so now we are going to um, start to feel the center meridian and really get our center, our center meridian strong, um, or at least our awareness of the center meridian to be higher. So let's just go through each of the the. Um, energy centers of the central meridian. So we would do, we're going to do this um, kind of short, well, kind of short meditation, <laughs> just to feel all of the, the energy centers within the central meridian. Okay, so just take a deep breath in. Yes, you each one. Just take a deep breath in. 
and let it all go. We've actually started to feel energy center number eight, which is eight inches above our head. So now just um, once again, just energy center eight, activate. And it's, as you breathe in, just imagine that you're breathing in through that energy center number eight. And imagine that you are breathing in pure love, pure love from the creator source. Imagine energy center number eight is eight inches above your head, right in the middle of your head. Just breathe in pure love from the creator source. Just breathe into it. And just set the intention to allow this energy center, number eight, to spin at just the right speed that it needed to spin in the order for your central meridian to be strong, vibrant. kind of imagine that in this middle of your head there is this prana too that is the central meridian think of it as like a straw a straw that you use to drink an iced tea or whatever drink that you use a straw for. And this central meridian is kind of like that. It is where you take in cosmic energy into your body. So the central meridian is kind of like, shaped like a straw that is in the middle of your body. Only it is all made up of energy this energetic energy, like a prana too. And as you bring in energy, the next step it goes through is energy center number seven, which is four inches above your head in the middle. That and set the intention that you want to connect with your guardian. You don't really need to consciously know who your guardian is, who your guardian angel may be. Just know that that is your intention is to connect with your guardian. And then going further down to energy center number six, which is your third eye area in the middle of your head, where you communicate, where you bring in ideas, creative ideas from the universe into you. So set the 
intention that you want to activate from this energy center number six and uh, allow it to spin at a speed that is just right for you in this moment to support you. And then going further down to energy center number five. Imagine that you are activating energy center number five. And you set your intention to allow energy center number five to spin as quickly or as slowly as it needs to in order to support you. Moving down to energy center number four, which is around where the level of your heart, only it is in the middle of your body, in the middle of this energy tube. And you set your intention to allow energy center number four to spin at just the right speed to support you in this moment, to bring in as much or as little of creative universal energy in this moment. And then bring further down to energy center number three. Yes, approximately where your gut area is. Set the intention to allow this energy center number three in the middle of your body to spin at just the right speed to support you in this moment. And consciously bring in energy to activate and support in this energy center number three to become vibrant. Then moving further down to energy center number two. with the intention that you want to allow this energy center number two to spin at just the right speed to support you to balance your masculine and feminine energy and to allow those energies within you to integrate and support you in this moment.
And now let's go back to energy center number one, which is four inches below your perineum. This is the center, the energy center that brings up earth energy that supports you. So now this energy center number one to spin as efficiently as needed to support you, to feel safe, to feel confident of who you are in this moment. And just feel your central meridian from eight inches above you going all the way down to four inches below your perineum. Imagine this whole energy tube in the middle of your body running smoothly. Supporting you. And at the same time, activate your Kundalini from energy center, from your chakra, your root chakra, which is at your perineum, all the way up. Your crown chakra, bringing energy from earth all the way to the top of your head. Activate your Kundalini to run. So that both of these major energy within your body is running. Central meridian bringing energy in through eight inches above your head from the universe all the way down to four inches below your perineum and at the same time your Kundalini is bringing up 0 0.01 the love energy from earth, from your root chakra all the way up to your crown chakra. Relax your body and allow both energy to run smoothly and efficiently within your body. And you feel that both are running smoothly and efficiently. Central Meridian and Kundalini coherence activate. Feel these two energies. Aligning with each other.
Central Meridian and Kundalini coherence activate. And when you feel those two energies become coherent, and you can take a deep breath in and come all the way back into the room and then open your eyes. How was that? Do you feel any difference when you try to have those two become coherent? Did you feel any difference? I feel the distance is there, but it might be getting closer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, good. We haven't merged them yet. They're just incoherent. No, no, no. So, yeah, we have to. Uh, so next one, we are going to actually go into the big meditation. <laughs> so that we um, make sure everything is activated. We have all the energies going on and then merge those two. This is just a... Uh, a test run. <laughs> Preparation. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Preparation for merging. I just I just want to make sure that you all can um really feel your central meridian running. And feel the difference first. And then the next time when we do the um, merging then it will be easier because now you kind of we've run have a run through of the whole central meridian so any uh, questions comments so far before we move on i remember sifu saying that uh, sometimes we have blocks in the body yeah, and I was thinking that that is why we have the pain sometimes, you know, spine or in the back and shoulders. People say, you know, they feel pain all the time. I don't yeah. realize that. A yeah. friend of mine recently over here, she had an issue in her L2, L3. And when the surgeon opened it the first time, he didn't see it. Uh, but then they were checking her. Uh, response to the body, uh, the pinching, and they were che checking her responses, and she couldn't feel anything on the right side. So he decided to take her back into the surgery, and then he saw a blood clot as big as an egg. Ooh, it's a good thing they caught and it. The, yeah. That's a very yeah. big blood because clot. Her main concern was to be able to move, like, as if she had carried on. She had uh, already carried on with that pain for quite a few months. She wasn't ready for the surgery. And he kept telling her, you know, that you're going to lose your mobility. Like, finally, she decided that it was time. Yeah. And when they were debating afterwards, because it was like middle of the night, to send her for MRI or tests and this and that, and they said nothing is available right now. She yeah. just got this white light coming to her floating from above, from her face backwards like the doctor was standing behind her yeah. and she said I totally trust you and he said okay let's just do it you know yeah, not okay. waiting for more reports <laughs> and he wouldn't believe it of course he said oh no you're in under anesthesia and you must have just had an illusion <laughs> did he cut this uh, clot yeah, of course, they have to suction it because you cannot 
catch a blood clot here. Yeah? Mm. They have to vacuum it out. And wow. he cleaned, cleaned the whole area. He waited for to see if there's more bleeding coming from anywhere. And then he even made the hole a little bit larger. He kind of scraped into the bone, make sure that it doesn't happen again. Then mm -hmm. afterwards, I asked her, I said, did you have any falls? And she said she had two severe falls on her back. People don't pay attention when you fall down. How much damage you can cause inside. She's going to mm. feel like new after this surgery. Oh, she's already walking within mm. a month. She's walking with a walker. <laughs> but she's going to have a lot of pain still as she progresses. Because the tissues again have to start working. But it's amazing that she uh, actually was uh, able to, you know, see the light. Yeah, yeah. behind the um, mm -hmm. the doctor. That really a is, couple is... of months back, she went to the Saint Mike's and uh, she was not ready. She got so alarmed when they told her what all they will do to the spine and how she'll have surgery. She was so scared that she's going to get disabled that she'd rather stay with the pain and. Mm -hmm. Even then, the pain was debilitating. She couldn't move. <laughs> so finally, she realized that there is no way except surgery. And she found the best doctor at St. Mike's. He's uh, like a famous surgeon. He's even called to the States sometimes. Mm -hmm. it looked, took like <laughs> 10 hours, 10 hours surgery. And at the wow. end of the day, because he was going to do it first thing in the morning, but the like in the hospital, emergencies keep coming. So he didn't get time. So he had told us 7.30 in the morning and he only started at 5, 5.30. And he was ready to do the surgery and he didn't see her. So he came to the room and he literally took her bed himself into the theater. So they said there was no orderly. <laughs> Oh, great doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen this in hospitals where they, if they don't have an orderly, they'll keep you hanging wherever you are. Like you go down for an x-ray, even if you're in the hospital, and there's nobody to bring you up. I had a patient like that, and then I went down to see what was going on. And they said they don't have the uh, orderly. I said, my God, what a big deal it is to just roll the... <laughs> Gurney like bed, you know, to the back to the room. Anybody can do that. Yeah, but you don't. Finally, I took him. <laughs> I took him upstairs because he was freezing. It was a, in the passage. He was left, and it was cold winter time. I just rolled him back to the room. Yep. Who knows what's happening in the hospitals? No, <laughs> no, yeah, it's very scary. Thing. Okay, so we're ready for the um, ready merging. Okay.